All right, I wanted to make a review video of my Zeiss Victory SF 8x42 binoculars. And here they are. Um, I have a total of two binoculars that I keep in my collection as my go-to binoculars. is going to be these Zeiss Victory SF 8x42s and the Swarovski CL Companion 8x30s. Um, I use those kind of in conjunction with each other. One is a hiking travel pair of binoculars, which would be my Swarovski CLs. And these is a full set of, um, a full size set of binoculars for long, you know, long, like if I had long duration viewing. If I could only have one set of binoculars, it would be without a question the Victory SF, Zeiss Victory SF 8x42s because of their superior performance, ease of use. Um, for giving eye placement and ergonomics and superb optics. Um, but I'll go over uh, everything in this review about what I like about these. Um, and uh, this is going to be a kind of a longer term review. I've had these for two or three years. First, let's start with this. First and foremost, let's start with the specifications. These are uh, magnification of 8x with objective lens diameter of 42 millimeters, angle of view 8 degrees, field of view 444 feet at 1,000 yards or 100 and 47 meters at 1,000 meters, minimum focus difference distance of 5 feet or 1.5 meters, exit pupil diameter of 5.3 meter, millimeters, um, eye relief of 18 millimeters, interpupillary distance adjustment range of 54 to 76 millimeters or 2.1 to 3 inches, diopter adjustment of negative 4 to plus 4, um, overdrive past infinity, even though I don't have an exact specification on this, I estimate it to be um, close to negative 5.75 or negative 6, which is amazing because it, it also corrects for my vision without glasses on, which is great. These are waterproof. They are nitrogen filled. They are fog proof as well. They are um, made out of magnesium, magnesium chassis and they are manufactured in Germany. The dimensions are a weight of 27.5 ounces or 780 grams. Dimensions of 6.8 inches by 5 inches or 17.3 centimeters by 12.4 centimeters. And so those are the objective dimensions. Now I'm going to talk to you about the optics. The optics of these are uh, going to be easy to talk about because they're pretty much flawless in my opinion. I have not compared these to the NL Pures. It's hard to talk about binoculars in a vacuum, so I'll give some relative comparisons of binoculars I have looked through and tested, looked at, looked at, looked side by side, looked through side by side with these SFs. Um, so regarding sharpness, first and foremost, these are the most sharp binoculars I have looked through and the most sharp edge to edge that I've looked through. Like I said, I have not looked through the NL Pures, but I have looked through the Swarovski ELs, and these are just as sharp as the ELs in the center. They're equal, equally or more sharp all the way to the edge. Um, the center resolution is just phenomenal. These are more sharp, these are sharper than the Monarch HG 8x42s, which I also do own. Um, I find myself focus hunting with the Monarch HG 8x42s because their center sharp, after coming from looking through these or my Swarovski Companion CLs, when I go back to looking through my Monarch HG's 8x42s, I find myself focus hunting because the center sharpness isn't that of these or the Swarovski CLs. And I have to, I, I finally focus hunt a couple times and realize that's the maximum resolution my HG's are able to achieve. Where when I go back to these, everything snaps right into view. The center sharpness is perfect. It's sharp all the way out to... 95% of the view and then it falls off at 95% and for the last 5% there's a little bit of fuzziness and a little bit of roll off but up to then these are the sharpest, sharpest binoculars I've looked through. Regarding and um, the brightness these are also the brightest binoculars I've looked through um, with the my Monarch HG 8x42s being equally bright no these are brighter than those. Touch um, and the ELs, Swarovski ELs, I think these are equally bright or maybe a touch brighter than the ELs. Um, so I have not looked through the NL Pures or the Leica Noctavids, um, but so far these are the brightest binoculars. Chromatic aberration is really what sold me on these, meaning the lack thereof. So there's absolutely no chromatic aberration to speak of 
in the center, there's only chromatic aberration out to the last 5% of the view. And maybe if you try looking for it in the outer 15, 20%, Maybe, maybe you might be able, but pretty much no chromatic aberration to speak of. And I am ultra sensitive in, in to chromatic aberration. My brain can't, you know, filter that out and it really bothers me. My Monarch HGs have very good chromatic aberration control, but still more chromatic aberration than I'm willing to tolerate in a pair of binoculars. Hence my purchase of these, which there was so much chromatic aberration to my liking in my Monarch HG 8x42s prompted me to look for another better set of binoculars. Um, and that just I'm just giving you the perspective so it goes to show how sensitive I am to chromatic aberration and how much this has an absence of it. Um, Zeiss binoculars, in, in my experience, have controlled chromatic aberration much better than compared to the Nikon counterparts. Um, so pretty much no chromatic aberration to speak of. Weight. These are heavy a little bit, that more about ergonomics, not the optics, so I'll table that discussion. Color accuracy. Color accuracy in these are fantastic. They're not as color accurate as my Monarch HGs. These do have a touch of a green color cast. Now, the way I like viewing through binoculars, I will take perfect resolution and no chromatic aberration over um, absolute perfection and um, color rendition so these of course i mean you can only see this green tint if you look at an, another pair of super neutral binoculars side by side um, and i started doing phot photography as a hobby with film with black and white film and so for my the way my brain works i always prioritize sheer optical performance in terms of resolution and controlling of chromatic aberration and excellent contrast over perfection ultra perfection in color rendition now during normal viewing one thing i was worried about is that that greenish tint and i can only notice it when i'm looking at completely white um really bright white uh objects but i was worried that this greenish tint could possibly make its way into looking at reds and so Nope, not a problem at all. The color transmission for the other wavelengths of colors is absolutely unencumbered. The greens are not overpowering. And so if I'm looking at like a cardinal, like a red cardinal or bird or something with nicely different colors, I never ever notice the green tint in normal use. Unless I'm looking at, not even against the sky. Against the sky, I cannot notice the green tint. Only when I may be looking at siding of a house that's, not completely directly lit, um, maybe a tint, and that too I have to look for it. Um, otherwise, when in normal use, I don't notice it whatsoever. And it does not impact the contrast, it does not impact the transmission of the other colors. The reds pop just as nice. And if anything, I think it might help a touch of helping discern browns from greens and uh, I noticed that I'm not a hunter, but when looking at like sparrows and brush or looking at anything, the green, the brown pops out really well against the green. So it's easy to identify even um, animals that are not moving. So I do not knock this. It's, it's, it would be um, not fair to say it's perfectly neutral because there is a touch of a green color tint and you got to look for it, but it's there. So compare, I've heard, I've never looked through the animal pures, but I heard that they don't have any color cast whatsoever. Even my Swarovski CLs seem a little, or seem very neutral, but they, in comparison back and forth, they also have a touch of a yellowish or warmer color cast. These are a cooler or green color cast. Um, my, my Monarch HGs just seem very neutral. But nonetheless, I, I find these, be, the view through them being very like, crispy very clear very glare extremely well controlled and is very i'll try to pull up a put a video of my view through these and while we're talking about them but the uh, view is excellent very well controlled glare extremely good contrast ex excellent um color transmission and superb sharpness makes these super pleasurable to view through and also the focus depth what stays in focus 
is excellent. A little bit better than the Monarch HGs. Um, NL Pures I've never looked through. A little bit better than my Swarovski CL Companions. And so of all the binoculars I've looked through, these keep the most amount of view front to back in focus. So the focus depth is excellent on these. So I have nothing negative to say about that. Um, regarding the uh, eye placement in terms of the optics, extremely forgiving. These are the most comfortable and most forgiving binoculars I've used to date. Um, even amongst 8x42s, some binoculars aren't as forg forgiving as others. The Zeiss Conquest HDs weren't nearly as forgiving as these or the Monarch HGs in viewing. I got a lot of blackouts with the Conquest HGs. These I don't at all. Um, all right, now let's move on to uh, ergonomics. So regarding the ergonomics, the weight of these are a little bit higher. They're at 27.5 ounces or 700 and. 80 grams so they're look they're not the lightest pair of binoculars but for the view they're totally worth it and the extent zeiss has gone through to keep the weight down is amazing and when you am looking when looking at these binoculars after trying many other binoculars these have the most thoughtful design features design characteristics compared to the others it's not just something else it doesn't when i hold these or i use these binoculars it doesn't feel like zyke just, just took a previous pair of binoculars you know put better optics in it. this one really gives me the feeling that zeiss took a total blank sheet of paper and said we're going to make these as best as we can cost non-issue make the design perfect period and then you end up with these because no other binoculars that I picked up have I thought the um, design features are as good as these. I'll go just point out some things that I don't immediately notice that I notice after you know a few months of use that I really came to appreciate. One is the weight balance, and it is advertised. I thought it was maybe like a gimmicky selling point. Absolutely not. The weight balance for these is somewhere back here. When I'm holding them, they na the fulcrum or the naturally the weight balance falls even a touch further back from my thumb, the weight balance. So if I balance them here, it's still falling backwards, if you can see that. There, and if I get right, right, right there am I balanced. And so it really helps when viewing, because when I hold them, the thumb becomes a fulcrum. They still have a weight bias of towards the eye cups. My finger sits here, um, so it doesn't bend, never gets stiff on this focus wheel. Not to mention the focus wheel is the best focus wheel I've used. And so I'll get to that in a second. So holding these, I may, when I rest these binoculars and I'm using them without my glasses, these eyepieces fall right onto my nose bridge. And I want to say 25% of the weight of the binocular sits right on my nose bridge. And then the rest of it is in my hand. And that too, it's... Um, Almost a third of the weight sits on my nose bridge and it's very comfortable. It moves with my head in one piece. It almost feels like it's attached to my head because how these fall back into my eye sockets um, because of the weight distribution towards this side. And it makes it very comfortable, very easy to use, very easy to track. And also that coupled with um, whatever they've done to help the field seem flat. There's no rolling ball effect that I get or any significant amount of distortion. So I can feel, I feel like these are almost like part of my head when I'm viewing and panning and scanning, and it's great. I can follow birds I'm watching through flight, no issues, no strain. It moves with me very naturally. And I could see that, th I'm not a hunter myself, but I could see how this could be a big benefit to hunters with um, the ability to pan, the ability for it to stay, uh, to, to stay, um, like seated in your eye socket and move with your head as one it removes a lot of shake makes it easy to view through for long periods of time and then that coupled with the um lack of no rolling ball effect or the field flatten or whatever they did as well as the how these re render the optics of like having the browns really pop out against the greens and the contrast and how much state how much of the how much stays in focus, the depth of focus. I, I could imagine these are like just an absolute instrument and a hunter's delight, as well as anybody looking to for an excellent pair of optics. So I find the ergonomics um, are synergistic with the design choices of the optics. And I find that fantastic and is very 
pleasurable to use. Another thing about the ergonomics is how, how the extent they've gone to keep the weight down. In spite of this being a three bridge design, this bridge is kept super nice and thin to be um, give stiffness, not to the chassis. I believe it did is a little bit. If you look there, you see that little dot? That's a little bearing. And it helps this helps focus wheel stability, smoothness, and um, uh, uh, I want to say stiffness. So not, not stiffness of turning, but st stiffness of movement. Or There's no squishiness, absolutely no play in this focus wheel. I can make... I can make adjustments about that, these small of adjustments in my focus wheel, which translate to adjustments within the optics of the internal um, glass of the binocular. And that, this is absolutely the best focus, focus engagement, lack, no slop or no play compared to any of my other binoculars. Um, not, to, not to mention uh, the focus wheel is smooth across the entire band. It's 1.5 revolutions from end to end through the whole range of focus and it's super smooth and it's just the way it's like fluid it's like you get like light touch and then smooth and you start speeding up it's just consistent and smooth all the way throughout and so i love this focus wheel it's great um another thing to mention about how much ex how extent they've gone through for weight savings these holds for the um neck strap are made out of plastic these are not actually magnesium, which initially I thought it was kind of didn't like that idea, but whatever. But it doesn't impact my use of them, and uh, they're fine. And if it helps me save some weight on these binoculars, I'll take it. It's fine. On my all of my other binoculars, including this. Another thing I wanted to mention is regarding the protection and durability. These are it's nice coatings. It's it's a little. It's just per, just as grippy as you want it without being sticky and. Uh, Okay, one more other thing I wanted to mention regarding the ergonomics is the eye covers or the eyepiece covers and the objective lens covers. And those are also um, great. They're not as tight or as um, stiff. I don't know how to say stiff. They're not as tight as my companion, uh, Swarovski companion CLs. And that's okay because I use them the way, and I like how they're designed for both different binoculars. These are a full size set of binoculars that you are going to want to be able to get these off quickly. And you're probably, when you're traveling, you're probably gonna put these in a case or when you store them, you put in a case. So these will fall off though. So like if I, if I shake, well, I guess not, but there, they're very loose. Uh, Swarovski's, I can, on my Swarovski CLs, I can lift the entire pair of binoculars by that and it won't come off. And I like that design on those because those are a travel hiking pair of binoculars. And I often find that for those binoculars, I put the eyepiece covers on, the objective covers on, and I throw them in a backpack or I throw them in luggage and I just don't want them to fall off. I never use these like that. Um, they're almost always in the case. I don't just throw them in there. Uh, so how, how I use these, I, I'm happy with that. But there's a lot of thought that's gone into them. They've kept this strap as well as these eyepiece covers, very, very lightweight. And this fact, they're even detachable, quick release detachable, which is nice. Um, and so all of that still contributes to the weight. And so everything in these pair of binoculars, I feel is designed around ergonomics, or sorry, everything in these binoculars I feel is designed by number one, first and foremost, slave to the optics or performance of the optics. Then comes every design choice is like, you know, has ergonomics in mind. And they somehow kept in mind how could they, you know, not lose optical performance and enhance ergonomics, hence that weight shift. Like I said, these feel like they're designed from ground up. And then after that, they said, we want to address the weight. And I'm making assumptions here, but it just seems like that after using these. And they kept these light, they kept this lightweight and this lightweight. Um, it's these are a dream to use and the thought it's just so obvious that it was carefully thought after these are the next strap is nothing super special but it's super lightweight it's very comfortable and this touch here it's made out of leather and it's got this little rubber thing uh, believe it or not for for a good period of time i used to use these binoculars with the nikon neck strap and after i started to appreciate it more and more i was like you know what this is just sacrilegious this is blasphemy. So I went ahead and I put the Zeiss, Zeiss neck strap that it came with. 
And I found that these are actually a touch more comfortable. And I also like that on Nikon, they always put this little rubbery grip on this side, as as does Swarovski. I actually like that they didn't, because when I'm when I'm have the using this and I want I'm carrying it on my side and I want to sling it around, this doesn't catch or pull on my shirt. It slides very smoothly, and so all the design choices in here make, in my opinion, these binoculars second to none. And I have no plan on ever trading these out or trying something new. And I've not compelled whatsoever to even look through a pair of NL Pures. Because of, uh, one, because of reports online saying these are pretty much neck and neck. But I just, these are so nice, so fantastic. And when I use them, they're very predictable. I know what to expect. I know where all the settings are for myself. They're almost like become a, uh, uh, you know, just a just a, like a, almost like a close friend. You just easy to use, very predictable, very durable, very very thoughtful, and um, there's not one bad thing I had to say about it. If I absolutely had to nitpick one uh, item about what what I what I think would be um, make them even better is maybe if they would have somehow found a way to, you know do away with that green color cast without compromising anything else. Now, I'm not a binocular designer. If they, they probably know this and they probably thought of it and they probably needed it, maybe needed to, you know, have that in there to control glare or improve contrast or sharpness or what have you, or address chromatic aberration. And if that's the case, I'll take it. I, I will, I will, um, uh, tolerate that compromise for those uh, performance, those other performance uh, objectives. So that's about it. That's my review for these. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, that helps you make a decision on whether you're on the fence about purchasing these as a pair of birding binoculars, recreational binoculars, hunting binoculars. I hope that helps. And that's about it. Thank you.